Hello everyone. Good morning. It's uh, Saturday. Wow. Yesterday we were all into the book, uh, book of Judges and we read about the story of um, Deborah. What an amazing triumph she had uh, with Barak or Barak. Not sure how to pronounce that, but uh, she sure inspired us, um, and we made declarations <clears throat> about how the Lord is giving us victory and has given us victory, and I have to say that those declarations really sent me into my day in uh, victory, and I was just so grateful that we were in that chapter yesterday. Good morning, Gail. <clears throat> Good morning, Melissa. Yeah, I was just so inspired by Deborah and what we read yesterday. So today in Judges 5, um, Deborah composes a victory song and I just think it's amazing um, that not only was she a victorious leader in the hands of God, she was also a composer, a singer, and a musician of sorts. I don't, you know, I think she had such a creative, uh, such a creative vein in her from the Lord. And so she recounts the victory in the song, and I think we should re recount it with her and inspire one another to use the talents and gifts that God's given us to give him praise, to give him thanks and worship for what he's done for us. <clears throat> Let's always remember to thank him, always remember to um, um, recount the victories have to keep reminding each other of our victories. All right, chapter five. Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoam, sang this victory song. Um, the notes say that this chapter is considered a literary masterpiece. Um, so it's a, it's a really uh, beautiful piece here. Let's read it. Verse 2. Blessings be to Yahweh who gave us victory today. For the people answered the call and Israel threw off what once held us back. Israel threw off what once held us back. I love that line in this song. There's several lines in here that are amazing. What once held us back we were able to throw off. Praise the Lord. Listen, you kings, open your ears, you princes, for I will sing a song to Yahweh. I will make music to Yahweh, the God of Israel. <clears throat> Yahweh, when you advanced from Seir and when you marched from Edom's plains, the earth trembled, the sky poured, awesome, the clouds burst and the mountains melted. In the presence of Yahweh, the glorious one of Sinai, in the presence of Yahweh, the God of Israel, in the presence of God, these things were happening. So awesome. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, and in the days of Jael, no one felt safe. The roads were deserted. This place was so chaotic. Um, this was... <clears throat> There was no road that you could travel on that you felt like you were going to keep your own life. Um, it was just mayhem when during this time. The, those who dared to travel took back roads. They had to hide themselves. Champions were hard to find. Hard to find in Israel. Until I, Deborah, took a stand. Isn't that glorious? She, She's tooting her own horn, but she's also giving glory to God, like she's saying, I rose up, he called me, and I rose up. I arose as a mother in Israel. Did you know that you are mothers? You can rise up as the mother that God has made you in the, in the body of Christ. And just as Deborah, she rose up as a mother in Israel. The Israelites chose new gods which brought war into the land. So they, um, she depicts here what actually caused the war, and it was the compromise of the people's hearts. 
Of forty thousand men in Israel, not a shield or spear was seen. My heart is with Israel's princes, with the people who gladly volunteered. Praise Yahweh. Declare it, you rich, who ride on your white donkeys, sitting on your fancy saddles. Declare it, you poor, who must walk wherever you go. So the spectrum is wide. Everyone is called to declare the goodness of the Lord. Listen to the sound of singers at the well as they proclaim the victories of Yahweh, the righteous triumph of his villagers in Israel. Then the people of Yahweh marched out from their city gates. Lead on, O Deborah, lead on. You know, there are leaders and there are followers. You have to have both to make the equation work. You have to have good leadership, but there has to be the people that come under them who are unwilling to compromise and follow that leadership. Lead on, lead on, Deborah. Awake, awake, break out in a song. Arise, O Barak, arise, son of Abinoam, arise, carry off your captives and lead them all away. The remaining nobles marched out. <clears throat> Yahweh's people came to me to fight against the mighty ones. You men of Ephraim came out to the valley. Your brother Benjamin joined your ranks. Leaders came from Manasseh. There's all these people coming together for one purpose and from Zebulun, those who hold the ruler's staff. Ishakar's princes rallied to Deborah. Ishakar stood fast alongside of Barak. Barak, everybody in this group here, we are standing fast alongside one another. Even if you just jump on here for today, we are standing fast with you alongside in your battle. rushing into the valley under Barak's command. While among Reuben's clans, <clears throat> there was great searching of heart. Reuben, why do you remain by the sheepfolds, listening for the shepherds to whistle for their flocks? Among Reuben's clans, there was great, there was great searching of heart. Um, this is just talking about the clans that didn't rise up in battle. They preferred to stay with the sheep and they did not come under the leadership of Deborah and Barak, as well as Gad and Dan. Gad played it safe and stayed east of the Jordan and Dan lingered near their ships, while Asher kept their distance and stayed by the coast, safe and secure in their harbors. But Zebulun and Naphtali defied death and risked it all on the heights of the battlefield. Some people today are not in the battle. The war that we're in, some are staying where it's safe, some are <coughs> um, deciding not to engage, but we need to engage. We've got so much at stake right now. Gad played it safe and stayed east of the Jordan, and Dan lingered near their ships while Asher kept their distance and stayed by the coast, safe and, safe and secure in their harbors. But Zebulun and Naphtali defied death and risked it all on the heights of the battlefield. At Tanak, foreign kings <clears throat> came and clashed. They battled by the stream of Megiddo. The kings of Canaan fought, but they took away no spoils of silver. Even the stars in the sky joined in the fight. This is a metaphor of the angel, angelic host fighting on their behalf. Moving across the sky, shining as they fought against Sisera, <clears throat> the flooding Kishon swept them away. The ancient Kishon River contended with them. Even the rivers were involved in the battle. I shall march and keep marching on. So be strong, O my soul. Let's declare this together. I shall march and keep marching on. So be strong, O my soul. Then thundering the horse's hoofs, pulling the chariots of the kings of Canaan, here they came galloping on, 
galloping on, steeds and stallions stampeding on, but they all got stuck in the mud. They never reached them. Speak a curse over Meros, says the king, says the, sorry, says the angel of Yahweh. And speak a double curse over those who live there. I've never heard of a double curse until right now, or I, I don't think I've ever read that. Maybe it's translated different, but there's a double curse, not just a curse. For they did not come to help Yahweh's cause, nor rally to Yahweh's side to fight the mighty. The most blessed of all women is Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, the most fortunate of Bedouin women. Sisera came to Jael's tent and asked for water, but she gave him milk. I still think that's so, hmm, help you sleep, you know? She brought him buttermilk in a beautiful bowl. With a tent peg in one hand and a workman's hammer in the other, she struck Sisera and pierced his skull. She drove the peg through his temple she shattered his skull, and he lay still before Jael. <clears throat> still amazing. What verse is that with the double curse? Um, 23. It says, Speak a curse over Meros, says the angel of Yahweh, and speak a double curse over those who live there. <clears throat> All right. Um, she shattered his skull, verse 27, and he lay still before Jael. Sprawled on the tent floor, he bit the dust at her feet, deader than a doornail. Sisera's mother waited for him at her window. Wow. Mm. Can you imagine if you were Sisera's mother waiting for him? She gazed from behind the lattice and lamented. Why is the clatter of his chariot so late in coming? Why are his horses slow, so slow to return? The wisest of her princesses replied, indeed, she even thought to herself, they must be gathering and dividing the spoils, a slave girl or two for each man, colorful cloth and garments as plunder for Sisera two colorful garments embroidered and richly embroidered garments for my neck um, yeah there's no notes on that at the bottom but um, this is how we might be thinking when we're wondering what's happening and we're trying to project you know whether something the outcome has been good or bad and unfortunately they find out for them that it is not good. And then verse 31 says, Yahweh, may all who hate you perish in the same way, <clears throat> but may those who love you shine like the sun. And uh, we need to remember, it says down at the notes, that those who love him become like him. Those who love him become like him. If you love the Lord, you're becoming like him. There's no doubt about it and if he is shining you are shining one of my favorite verses is as he is in this world so are we and um, the last set the last scripture says bright in its strength as it crosses the sky but may those who love you shine like the sun bright in its strength as it crosses the sky may you be just like him bright in your strength crossing the sky with great light. <laughs> May you be beautiful in your shining for him as you become more like him because you love him. And then the last sentence says, the land had peace for 40 years, more peace for 40 years because of Jael, uh, Deborah, and Barak. Thoughts? Anybody have any thoughts about this beautiful song? <clears throat> wow. There's so many notes here that I was reading in a commentary. Let me go back up into verse... Um, 
23, I believe it is. Yeah, my commentary does not <clears throat> talk about this double curse. It just says that the city of Maros was cursed. Um, and, <clears throat> and um, Yeah. I don't see anything relevant to what we're talking about here in this uh, commentary that I wanted to bring out. I just want to see what you guys thought. Majesty, beauty all through the song, Gail said. I'm locking arms with all of you to do battle. Amen, Melissa. Is there anybody <clears throat> that wants to share anything about um, how their day is or what, what they're going to do today I get to go have a massage this afternoon it's been months since I've done that and um, I'm really looking forward to it um, yeah good things happening you're still on vacation Melissa correct and Caitlin how are you doing Oh, Gail says, bright shining as he is, so are we. Yes, amen. I wish you all could see the flowers at Gail's house. She's got beautiful flowers. Hello, Michelle. I hope you're doing well, too. I'm trying to see if anybody else is on here. Well, friends, thank you. I will enjoy that. At, I think I'm at scheduled at three. My daughter's going to the movies today. <clears throat> and my other daughter is working. She has six days in a row starting today. Much more hours than normal because she's now the innkeeper this week instead of just the manager. She actually will be staying there. This is a excuse me, part of what I'm going through as a mom is just my daughter is growing up right before my eyes really quickly. Adulting yesterday was spent part of the day securing an apartment for her beau, who it's his first time to do all of this and the paperwork and, you know, they're so happy to put up curtains for him and, yeah. God is good. He's seeing us through all this. Oh, you're welcome, Caitlin. Thank you. Finishing projects, Gail says. Oh, and your flu. Caitlin, I'm so sorry. So it did turn in to be a flu for you. I was wondering how, how sick you might have gotten. I'm so sorry. And Michelle, did you receive your book, I wonder? So, we wish we all were in Hawaii with you, Melissa. <laughs> I wish, oh, Caitlin, I just bless you with healing, healing, healing. Healing. Lord, we pray for Caitlin right now that you would heal her body completely and fill her with your peace, your joy, your hope. Come be with her, Lord, during this time and and comfort her and restore her to health. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> oh, good. Michelle got her book. Yay. 
All right, God bless you guys, and I'll see you Monday. Not tomorrow, but I will be back on Monday. Okay, bye-bye, everyone.